Don't embarrass him by, by having a bad day. Say, you know, I'm having a challenging day, but I'm going to walk this thing out. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you, because I know you want to remember, and I know you won't want to forget. May the 1st to the 21st is our second fast. Yeah, don't forget about that. It starts on May the 1st. Oh, oh that's right. How did that so like that? Let me know, because I didn't chance to read my schedule. That means we fast for 21 days. Amen. Hallelujah. We got one more to go this year, so. We're seeing God move. The Lord spoke to me about a couple of things, uh, and then I'm going to move to here. He said that uh, I want to remind you that to tell the people of God that this is a place for healing. So if you're sick, come here. Don't go home. Before you go to the hospital, come here first. Amen. And then you go to the hospital. I believe in hospitals. Amen. 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 We might have a bad day. Can't raise you up, so go. <laughs> <laughs> You might be in fear, so you are a hospital. Before you, before you do, come and pray. God promised me, he said, I'm going to start uh, miracles and signs and wonders when you bring Hallelujah. people who are sick. So Praise find the God. people who are sick, those that have diabetes, those that are struggling with high blood pressure, and all those things that have not been able to get it under control. Bring them to the house of God. Let's see what Jesus will do. Come on, all somebody. Right, Let's see right. what Jesus will do. I believe he'll move yes. And all of you are here right now who are struggling with something in your body or in your mind, or in your, in your, whatever it might be, stand to your feet so God can do something for you. Just stand up in it. Just stand up in it. Don't look at nobody. I don't, I don't care who sees you. I don't care who sees you. But stretch your hands. So Lord, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're in your house. We're in your presence, oh God. It would be an indictment if we didn't let you be God. So, Father God, we give you a space of grace right now to bring healing, to bring wholeness, to bring freedom, to bring deliverance, to bring answers, oh God. We thank you for releasing answers for each one that stands here, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's social, economical, whatever it might be, Lord. You're the God that meets thank every need. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for miracles, 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 yes, miracles, God. miracles, miracles. We're not almost all the way, God. All yes, the way. Yes, all yes, the way. Yes. All the way, Lord. Change situations and circumstances. Touch heart, so oh God, yeah. that your will mm -hmm. might be done. Now, if you believe God, I want you to just simply shout to him. If you believe God, I want you to I said, if you believe God, I want you to simply shout to him. I actually believe that God is yes, the God, God of miracles. I'm yes, standing right here. Some yes, of you God. are standing. You are the miracles of God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Celebrate being God's miracle. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Worry about what God's going to do. Be seen, be seen, be seen, be seen, be seen, be seen. There's a couple different ways I could go today, but... I'm not going to go. I could talk about the Easter Bunny, uh, who came from Germany, by the way. He was a hare, H-A-R-E, and he, the myth said that he laid eggs in a nest. And German, the Germans brought it to America. It switched from a bunny to an Easter basket. How many know that uh, rabbits don't lay eggs? I mean, like boiled eggs, like I do. They good. They good. They good. Yeah. I can go there. But 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 the thing is, is that it actually has nothing to do. Like any anybody. Ever Birth it deals with fertility and all that. So I'm not going to talk about that. Anybody, the Easter parade started with rich folks, y'all, mm -hmm. in Manhattan. What they would do, they would dress to the keel, walk down to the street to their church, and people would stand and watch them. And now today, we just had a parade today. Y'all walked around in there. Yes, we did. But it started, had nothing to do with resurrection. Nothing wrong with it. But that's not connected with that. Constantine uh, tried to combine a number of different things. Uh, those of us who, who used to go early in the morning, they have sunrise breakfast. Anybody eat that? Bacon and eggs and so anybody, anybody. And uh, Constantine is the one who had the worship of the sun, and that's what it was all about. So he blended it in because if you can't beat them, listen to this. First you join them, then you take them over. So first you join with you, me and you just alike. Me and you just alike. And then after you join for a while, then you take it over. That's what Constantine did. So he joined Christianity together, and then he took it over. 
And so a lot of things that we do, I could tell you about the ham. You know, how many how many have to have that, that Easter ham? Easter, Easter ham, yeah. Got to have that Easter ham. You know, if you look at the history of it, you might not want to eat it the same way. But I'm, and I'm not even talking about the pork part. I'm talking about the, the idol part, the pagan part of it. You know, go look it up. Go Google that. Google, Google, <laughs> Google about it and find out what, what is it with the ham. And why does Kroger's have hams on sale this time and not turkey? <laughs> 97 cents a pound, see what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't find it no time during the year like that, but right around that time. Again, we're working, we're working something, so we work things in, and then they take over. They blend with you, and then they take over. There wasn't no chickens there at the resurrection. There wasn't no bunny hopping. Now you get your picture made with it. Yeah. Amen. More money, more money, more money, more money. I ain't mad at him. If you're going to do it, I'll take your money too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. More money. So you got this big old guy sitting there, sitting there and he, he's uh, doing things like that. So, so a lot of things that we, that we did traditionally that we do uh, have nothing to do with resurrection. In fact, the word Easter is mentioned only one time in the scripture. And if you translate it from a Greek, Greek language, it's not Easter at all. It's Pasha, which means Passover. Yeah. And so this year, uh, the Jews... Uh, celebrating Passover to the same time we're having resurrection. It fell on the same time. And so they're having Passover and some of our believers and brothers and sisters, they're getting confused. They're trying to see, should I serve Passover? Should I do? What should I do? You know, all those kind of things. Do whatever you want to do, okay? But let me tell you this. Don't forget about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That Passover bread is good stuff. You ever had that kosher? Have you ever had them kosher rolls they got? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And I like the Kaddish uh, grape juice. I drink that all the time anyway. So there's some good things in there, but let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it messed up. Let's not try to blend and be what we're not. Jesus broke us from the law, so we've got to be very careful that we're not sliding back up under there thinking because we're mixing, and whenever somebody mixes blends with you, remember this. If they're not really with you, soon they'll take over what you thought you was running. Constantine did it, and uh, he came in and said, well, shoot, this is, can't we all just... Get along and sit down and say, well, no, if you do that day, then we can do this day. And you have that day, we'll give you that day, and we take these two days. And, and we'll give you that day, and we'll celebrate the sun on this day. And can't we all get along? And after a while, he overrode Christianity. So Christianity has a lot of mixture in it, but, but Christ is still in there, y'all. He's still in there because you're still in there. You're still in there. And so we have to be able to separate out. It doesn't make difference to some people. It makes a lot of difference to me. If you look at uh, somebody, somebody who, who, somebody was from, look at Matthew. Everybody go to Matthew 1240. Let's look at Matthew 1240. Matthew 1240. Matthew, Matthew 1240. What are we looking at? Matthew 1240. Man, here's somebody got it for me. What is stand and read it for us, please? Matthew 1240. You have it, stand and read it for us, please. Amen. Matthew 1240. Boy, y'all got slow. Ain't got no digital Bibles, come on. Read for me, please. Thank you. What's your name? Jabron. Uh, Read it for me, please, brother. Uh, Matthew 12, 40. Yes. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Read it one more time. Read with that loud, strong voice. One more time. For as Jonah was three days and three nights. How many days? Three days. Okay. And how many nights? Three nights. Where? Keep going. So the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's in the, is that in the Bible? Yes. Okay. So there's no such thing as Good Friday. No such thing as Good Friday. Friday to Sunday, no matter how good you are in math, you can't get three days and three nights out of it. Can't get it. Well, they said, but you can, I told you, Constantine begins to blend. So you're trying to count, and most of y'all, the child can count better than that. Friday, he died on Friday at three o'clock. From three o'clock to Saturday is two days. It ain't two days, is it? No matter how you cut it, well, part of a day, piece of a day, no, no. God is not that dumb, and neither are you. Oh, yeah. No such thing as Good Friday. 
Do you get off work? It's a good Friday. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we'll let y'all work. Hey, come on. Thank you, Lord, for a good Friday. Appreciate it. We used to get off on Mondays. I said, go, oh, hallelujah, glory. You get Mondays? It's a good Monday. Amen. Anytime you get off a good Monday, but it has nothing to do with the burial. If you study, you'll you find out actually Jesus passed on Wednesday uh, on a on a preparation day. On Wednesday, and he's up up. The Bible calls him the Lord of the Sabbath, and Sabbath is Saturday. But any holy day is called a Sabbath. So it says the preparation day, which was a high day. Any holy day is a Sabbath. People think that God only, they, when they celebrated their holidays and they're celebrating Passover now, every day of Passover is a holy day. Every day. So they started on, I think it's the 14th. I'm not sure. No, the 10th. They started on 10th. So on the 10th, every one of those days is a holy day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Holy day. So, so anyway, I, I don't want to spend time on that today because I just threw that at you so you would know that. We've got to be careful for blending. There are people who lose their salvation arguing about it. Don't argue about it. Just live your life. Amen. Live your life. There wasn't no money wrap. You want to get, you want to get some candy on sale tomorrow? <laughs> You get that good chocolate at half price. Amen. That's where I'll be to get it then. Amen. You get it. And, and then there's another, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a commercial on TV that's interesting because because it goes almost to the edge, but it doesn't go all the way. And it goes like this. Marvin Gaye. He's saying, let's get it. Get it on. It's one of my favorites, you know. Amen. This was my favorite. It turns into an egg, remember? It turns into an egg. So the God of fertility is what Constantine dealt with. We can deal with that. And that's blended in there. All of us thrown in there together. And so they said it means new birth and a breaking of spring and all those kinds. Of, well, spring already sprung this year, so it's kind of late. But all of those things are involved. We must sort it out when we're dealing with truth. Because if you find errors in the scripture, pretty soon you'll back away from God. You'll back away. Well, no, I don't. You didn't say it like that. Uh, let me just throw something else at you uh, because I can. Mm. I told you the Constantine worship the sun. That's where we got sunrise from. In Matthew 12, 53. Somebody stand and read that for me. Matthew 12, 53. What did I say? Is that right? Okay, good. I got it wrong. Let me let me. It's Matthew 26, 53. Thank you. I'm glad you're looking. Somebody got Matthew 26, 53, I think it is. Let's see. Anybody got that? <coughs> if somebody says to me, Happy Easter, I don't say, It's not Easter. It's not Easter. I said, Thank you. Happy Easter back to you. Because you might be celebrating Easter. Yes, oh, he's, he's our, give our, our reader a hand. This guy's our reader. Hey, hey. Matthew 26, 53. Read 52 first. Put your sword back at his place, Jesus said then. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. 53. Do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once, he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels. Keep reading. For how then will the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At the time, Jesus said to the, to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this is all taking place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Thank you. Thank you. So Jesus says he called 12 legions of, late, legions of angels. A legion is 6,000. 12 times 6 is. So he called 72,000 just like that. He said he could do that. 
He said, if he want to do that. So he helps us understand that he's not defenseless. Yes, yes. See, some fights you don't fight. Mm -hmm. Some fights you let God fight. Yes. If you fight him, you lose. Right. If he fights him, you win. Mm -hmm. So his whole battle was to get to Calvary. His whole battle was to purchase salvation for us. Thank God he purchased it. He purchased salvation for all of us. He purchased it for us. Thank God for that. He purchased it for us. Now, maybe you or me, we might have got going. But after that first nail, hey, let's renegotiate. So he purchased, and he said, I can call for help. Now, that's important for you to know that. Uh, one scripture says, nobody takes my life, I lay my own life down. I, and, and I have power to lay it down. I get that. And I have power to pick it back up again. That's important. I have power to lay it down. I have power to pick it up. That's important for you to know because in Psalms 22, if you read the entire chapter, you can't think about verse, I don't know, maybe 16, where he says, God did not hide his face from him. The people say, the Lord couldn't stand to look at sin, so he turned his face. Wait a minute now. How many of y'all sinned this week? Anybody sinned this week? Anybody sinned last week? Hopefully you didn't sin this morning because you came to church. Amen. If God couldn't look at Jesus who's carrying our sin, what is he going to do for you and me? Here's what he says about sin. He says, confess your sin. And I'm faithful and just to forgive your sin. Now, does that mean all sin or some sin? Which sins will God forgive? All sins. Which sins will you forgive? All sins. Depends on who sins against you. Depends on who sins against you. See, so you have the exception. God doesn't. That's why we can't ex understand how God moves. How, how could God do that? Because God is an equal opportunity forgiver. He forgives people you wouldn't even be bothered with. He can forgive people that you are upset with right now sitting in service. Why do you have to say that? Because I needed to say that. He's a, he forgives everyone now. He forgives everyone who requests forgiveness. They got to request forgiveness. It doesn't just happen automatically. They request it and God grants it. He has the power to grant forgiveness. How many asked God to forgive you this week? I didn't have to. I was, just, I, I was so good this week. I, I just was really good this week. Was you? Liar, liar. <laughs> Ask God to forgive you for lying. No. no, no, no. You know you. Maybe you were perfect this week. Bless your heart. I'm so glad you brought your perfect self to service today. Amen. We have the perfect. We, have, we need to have the section that says the perfect self. We know that's not true. We're not perfect. But we are perfecting. Come on. We are growing. We are growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord's Amen. And that's a good thing. So I just knocked down the three days and three nights. I just knocked it down. If you read uh, out of the Lambs of the Bible, uh, Jesus says, For this purpose was I spared. Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbatani. For this, my God, my God, for this purpose was I spared. I was kept. I was saved for this. God is saving you for greater purpose. Come on, man. Amen. The things that you're going through, begin to say, God, you're saving me for greater things. That's how you get through it. That's how you'll get up. That's how you'll move. Because when you start saying, the Lord, I, I'm going through something right now, but the Lord is saving me for greater things. He's saving me for greater movement. He saved me for greater things. That'll cause you to get going. That'll cause you to get moving. That'll cause you to realize you didn't do it on your own. You didn't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps because you can't even make your own boots, most of us. You got to go down and get them somewhere. Amen. Somebody has to make it. But if you begin to say that about yourself, if you begin to talk about yourself, begin to tell yourself. Paul said, I tell my body to get under. I tell it. Listen, you ain't got time to get sick right now. So listen, you know, straighten up. Let's go. Let's go. No, your body's arguing. No, no, I want to be sick. You can't be sick right now. I got free tickets to somewhere. I'm going there. Somebody invited me to dinner. They never invited me to dinner. And it's a good restaurant, you know. It's got five and a half stars to it. It's really good. And we're going. So body get together. And then you drag yourself. It's amazing what you can make yourself do when you want to make yourself do it. Did you know that? 
When you want to make yourself get up, you can get up. When you want to make yourself go through, you can. You just tell your body, okay, so we got pneumonia. But we need to go right now. So I rebuke pneumonia. And it'll leave. It'll leave. Pneumonia said, when you get back, I'm going to get you. That's all right. But right now, right now I'm on my way. Right now I'm on my way. So forget that. And you'd be amazed. Many of you know that. You have pulled yourself beyond. And you don't even know how you got where you needed to go. But you determined to set your mind and said, I got to do this. So hey, if I told you that there were, and I said this before, that there were a hundred thousand dollars in hundred dollar bills laid on the parking lot and if whoever gets to it you get as much as you want that while I'm preaching right now you would be gone but I put a stipulation I said it's full of cobras and cobras and what's the snake that swallows you and pythons they're all over the lot too then some of you would reconsider and say listen if you go get me a couple I'll, I'll work something out with you but some of you will still go. We're the one who will still go. Come on, there you go. You will still go say, hey, because I got power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all, and you would make the word of God literally at all the party and nothing shall by any means hurt me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And they said, bring me something. Now you come get your own. Can I tell you, you got to get your own from the Lord. And just like I gave that illustration, many of the things that come our way are laden with the enemy laying there trying to trip us, trying to bite us, trying to hurt us, so we're afraid to step on it. But you got power to tread upon it. You got power to tread up on the thing that is trying to hinder and stop you from being all that God called you to be. You have power. He ain't sending no more power. You already sent it. Now get this, get this, get this. Get this. I wrote a question down to ask all of you. Jesus, we celebrate that Jesus was raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. Never to die again. Mm -hmm. Where is Jesus now? Where is the resurrected one at now? Yeah. Where is he? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Oh, he is? Oh, who's in you? The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. Jesus showed us how to do it. Now it's your time to do it. Resurrect. Resurrect. Get up. Get up. Get up! Besides, you know what? I, 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 no more shackles or something. No more. You know what? I've been running myself through this for a long time. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in my body. Well, let me get it in my mind. Let me get it in my heart. Let me let it flow through my veins. Let it move in my circumstances. Let me let it move in my situation. Let it let it move in my family. If it's in me, then let it flow in me. I'm talking to you, saints. Because we compromise too soon. We're doing the Constantine thing. Well, yeah, you know, you get a little weary sometimes. Yeah, we do. But right now, you need to work. If you go to sleep at work on most jobs, what do they do for you? They fire you. If you get to go to sleep on, on Jesus, what does he do to you? Wonder, now this, this has a little depth to it, y'all. Wonder if your circumstance was sent to wake you up. You've been sleeping on your power. And God knows he got to keep you busy because if he don't, you just, you'll have lag time. Amen. See, see, see the power, the resurrecting power is in me. And the only way it gets used as I execute it. And when I execute it, it begins to flow. Now, how strong is the resurrection power? How strong is it? Well, it's strong enough to beat death, destruction, disease, sickness, confusion. It's strong enough to do that. The question is, is am I strong enough to try it? Will I try it? 
When I'm met with a situation that threatens my life or my situation, I say, will I stand up and say, oh, wait a minute, this is not right. Or will I compromise like so many of our preachers are doing across the country now who are compromised, they blend it in now. And after a while, it will take them over. And after a while, you won't even know who they are. Compromise is a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous enemy. That's what Satan did to Job, to not Job, but to Eve. And Adam didn't even have a fight. Jesus. No backbone at all. So what are we going to do about this? There are some things. Let me try to answer the question. Why doesn't God answer my prayer? Because you got enough power to execute what you need. God, I need a better job. All right, well then I, I, I execute, release, release a revelation, release where you need to go, and then go. Man. Well, he gave me three choices. Which one should I take? Which one do you want? I don't know. I'm waiting on Jesus to touch me. He already touched you. He gave you the power to choose. He gave you the power to choose. Look at somebody say, you need to start choosing. Make some choices. Tell somebody. Choice. 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 Tell somebody behind you. You need to start making some choices. I always tell the story about grace to myself. Grace said, let's go eat. I said, okay, where do you want to go? I don't know. You choose. And guys, if you ever chose, I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to go there. So now I tell her, you choose. So the other day she gave me some choices because she said, I chose the last three times. I said, yes, she did. I'm going to let you choose. Oh, so if she let me choose, then I ha she has to go there. If she let me choose. So she let me choose and she said, never mind. Let's, we, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. How do we get this? And see, my job, my job, I learned my job is to agree. My job is to win to choose. My job, job is to come into agreement because the two shall agree. So I learned to agree. Okay, well, yeah, that's a great idea. And we agree. God wants you to agree with him that you're healed. God wants you to agree with him that you're blessed. God wants you to agree with him that this too shall pass. Yes. How many need some things to pass? I need this thing to pass. It's time for this thing to get over. Well, God wants to agree with you. Now, you agree with me. Right now, say, Lord, I agree with you. Lord, and the thing here that needs to pass is passing before this week is out. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise for it. Come on. Give him a praise for it. I need to make my next plan. Now, since that's over, let me, what am I so I'm going to do? No believer should be stuck nowhere. Come on, y'all need to hear me. No believer in Jesus Christ should be stuck nowhere because they use the resurrecting power that they have to break things happen. The first place you use the resurrecting power is on yourself. Get yourself straight. Use it on yourself. Lord, I ain't been thinking right. Father, I release your resurrection power because I need my mind to be straight. I got things to do, business, places to go. And I'm tired of making dumb decisions. How do I know that dumb decisions? Because there's no results. No results. God is quicker than me. God is faster than me. Is God faster than you? Is God quicker than you? He put a spit in you that's quicker than you, faster than you. It will go past your mind, past your logic. But he'll, he'll tell you what to do. So when he tells you what to do, well, you know, I don't know how we're going to do that. Stop it! We ain't doing nothing. He's doing it. And he brings us along, brings us alongside, drags us alongside, pushes us alongside, whatever he got to do to get us there. Many of us would never be where we were if it was our decision. Come on, let me talk to you. 
It's because of the grace of God that somebody prayed you through, pushed you through, stood with you, encouraged you, kept telling you the same thing. Of, you all right? You all right? No, I don't feel like you all right. You all right? You all right? You all right? And finally, woke up. I'm all right. I'm all right. I didn't know I was all right. You all right? They slapped you into it in the name of Jesus. They pushed you into it. They kept calling you. They kept motivating you. They kept telling you. Hallelujah. And finally, you got where you were. Then you start church to lie. No, Miss I didn't walk with Jesus. I always would. You liars. Better watch out for fire start dropping off. <laughs> Nobody gets to where they are by themselves. It's another resurrected person that came into your life and touched your life. And when they touched your life, when they touched your hand, fire began to fall. And, and the Spirit of God stirred you back up again. And you got all excited all by yourself again. Because God used somebody. God wants to use you. Finish your assignments. Stop getting mad at the people God sent you to. Get on my last nerve. Oh, that's your last one? time I see they make me sick. Amen. They make you sick. That's why God keeps bringing them to you so you can get healed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Get on my last nerve. Every time they call, they the man, Lord. Lord, use me. Send me where you want me. Stop telling God what you don't want to do. Amen. Do it this way. Father, I surrender to you. I become whatever you need me to be. I will do whatever you need me to do. But don't do, but don't send me to Africa and don't send me to <laughs> don't send, Let me tell you, he won't send you to Africa because you would cause a national incident because of your nervousness. But when you ask God and give God liberty to do what he wants to do. Well, if you're like, reason why you're born, why you're here, reason why Jesus paid the price. If you do that, amazing things will begin to happen for you starting today. People will show up that you didn't know existed on the planet. And they'll say, the Lord told me to give you. He did? Yeah, what? What did the Lord tell you? The Lord told me, stand up. The Lord told me to give you a hug. A uh hug? -huh. That's all. All God told you was to give me a hug. Amen for the hug. Thank you. Is that it? That's a start. As much stuff I've been going through, I've been up and down, level to the ground. I've been struggling going through. And you say God sent you to give me a hug? Is that it? And miss God all day long. Because some people need a hug. And you need one too. So we just real quickly, real quickly, find somebody to give them a hug. Give them a hug, you're right? Real quick, real quick. Everybody give somebody. Everybody, all God's people give somebody a hug. Everybody give somebody a hug. All God's people give them a hug. And the Lord said, I'm releasing healing in this hug today. I'm breaking forth my power and authority in a simple hug. A simple hug will bring restoration and wholeness Amen. to you as you receive it. Well, surely I am your Lord, your God, and I make it simple for you, not complicated. Thank you, Lord. So in one hug, we call some healing. Yes. My good, what would... You see, when a resurrected person touches you, it's not just a hug. It's to release a resurrecting power. Amen, amen. Amen. Blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can set among saints and drop dead because you don't allow God 
to do what God wants to do. And you think it's somebody. People should never move unless they are assigned by God to move. If God doesn't assign you to do it, don't touch it. Remember the story where, where the ark was falling and the brothers thought we'd just grab it and help God out and what happened? God fried him. Why would God fry him? He said, I don't want nobody touching it. When God says he don't want nobody touching it, he don't want nobody touching it. Uh, uh, somebody told me a story the other day and I hope I can remember it correctly. It was a story about uh, how they train drug dogs, drug dogs, drug dogs. And they train drug dogs and they, and they bring them to the airport. And they were training these drug dogs and they turned them loose to go to the air, go on an airplane. And they found all these drugs. They was tearing this place. They found drugs everywhere. And he called them back and he said, heal. And they sat there. But there were three or four dogs that stayed there, kept pulling, kept pulling it out, kept tearing. They tore that, finished tearing the plane up. And they brought them back. And he sent them down. He said, these dogs need more training because they don't know how to obey. Mm, praise God. Sometimes when God sends you on the assignment, he only wants the assignment done and not extras. It looked all right for the dogs, but that wasn't what the dogs were supposed to do. They were supposed, I'm not calling y'all dogs. Don't get me right. I'm not calling y'all dogs. I'm making a, 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 a comparison. But the dogs that kept going on after they called them back to heal, he said, these dogs need to go back and be retrained. Is it possible that some of the things that God wants to do with us require more training? That you were supposed to tell, give them this word and then you added your words. Because you felt compelled. And God said, stop. All I want you to do is tell them this. All I want you to do is give them this. All I want you to do is re release that. Now I just ask people to stand up and give everybody a hug. And everybody didn't do it because see, you don't know how to obey. But that's alright, you get another chance. You don't know how to obey. And if you can't obey when God gives an order, why would you expect people that you are over to obey you? Why would you ask God to put you over something and then upset because people won't obey? I don't know why I'm going here, but I need to. They won't obey you because you don't obey. Whatever measure I meet is measured unto me. And so Jesus understood that I need to go to Calvary. Peter pulled his sword out and sliced the ear off of a brother. And before the ear hit the ground, Jesus grabbed it and put it back on. So he had the power. But he understood obedience causes me to follow whatever I'm told to do. And if you read and study Christmas, they beat him, they pushed him, they slapped him, did all this kind of thing. Spit on him. Somebody spit on you, that's enough to fight. No, oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. You don't spit, so spit on me off. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. But he spit on them. Some of our civil rights people back in the day, they were spit on, they were not, they were kicking all that stuff. And they were moving for civil rights. They learned how to obey. They were trained to obey. Stay there. Oh, I, I ain't gonna let nobody. See, see, here's the thing about what Jesus did. I told you last week. He rode in on a donkey the first time, peace, but he's coming back on a war horse next time. And then it won't be, he'll be cutting and moving and, and flowing things. You need to understand this. Thank you. You need to understand. Okay, we need to understand that you're full of power, but it only works out of obedience. So the smart thing to do is to check in with your heavenly father before you open your mouth. I'm going to tell you. No, wait, Lord, should I tell you? No. The devil is a lie. You know what? The devil trying to tell me. I will tell you because somebody can tell you. No. Remember I told you there's such thing as destructive truth? Which means it's true, but it destroys. We have to learn how to not take destructive truth. But it's true. Yeah, there's a whole lot of things true about you. We don't need to know about you. We really don't need. We really don't need. In fact, it might change how I see you. I'm going to let you for treasure. And I found out you embezzled funds. 15 years old. Now you're 
60. It just changed how I saw you. I don't even know what the I don't even know if it was true. I heard it. Through the grapevine. I heard it. But I didn't know. So today, as we resurrect ourselves, as we allow God to raise us up, as we look at the places where we have been under, we look at the places where we have been down and out, and we say, I'm going to take this resurrecting power to this. I have to take the resurrecting power to my marriage. But sometimes grace doesn't act right. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes it changes. Every and every one She viewing. She online. But after 40 years together, I just about got out in training. <laughs> in case you thought about it. I just about got in training. But I'm saying it because you have to decide to have your ears so close to God that you will obey him against your own emotions. Against your own. Now, Jesus shows he could have wiped them out at the garden. He could have cleaned the place out. In fact, one brother, while he's up on, on the cross, says, why don't you save yourself and save me? Somebody else said to him, if he really was who he was, why don't he come down off of that? You know what would happen if he come down off that cross? He had to mess up the plan of God. You know what will happen when you stop the plan of God upon your life because somebody gets on your nerves, somebody pushes the bar through, somebody insults you, somebody brings offense to you, somebody, they push you off your plan of God. In fact, let me take it this way. Some of you have been pushed off your plan by somebody who insulted you, who called you out your name, who didn't treat you right, who didn't promote you. But guess what? The plan, God still has the plan. The plan is not over. You have the plan of God. Decide, Lord, give me the resurrection power to get back on the plan and follow it. Jonah, told, Jonah was told by God to go to Nineveh. He said, I can't go. I am not going. You want me to go and prophesy to crazy people? There's over 50,000 people in that city. They are nuts. They're out there. Mind. And you want me to prophesy to them and tell them to turn back to God and fast to God? I ain't going. So he got on a garbage barge. James Blue's version. <laughs> and he gets on that barge, and these guys are, these guys are heathens. They say, yo, he, ho. Jonah got to go. That's what he got to go. Oh, he, oh. Jonah got to go. And they convinced Jonah. Now, check it out. They were going through, they knew storms, they understood all that stuff, but it said something is wrong. Listen, people who don't know God know something's wrong. How can people who know God not know something's wrong? How can you know God and not know this stuff is discombobulated? I ain't right. See, don't I always try to find who ain't right? Deal with you. If I get right, I become the plumb line. Come on, somebody. I become the plumb line. Everybody's picking on everybody. Why don't you get right? Because when they get right with God, say it like that. <laughs> you get right with God. If you get right with God, God will get right with you. If you get right with God, God will get right with you. He's been waiting, waiting, waiting for somebody, somebody to get right with God so God can get right with you. So we see. I love those who have that skill set. I appreciate it. I do. You get right with God. Why is it always somebody else? If they would just get sweet. If she would just act right. If he would not have done that. If that job knew that I need some time off, they wouldn't have fired you. They fired you because you need some time off. They gave you all the time you need. <laughs> <laughs> See, if I deal, listen to me, if I deal with me, then the power of God that's in me will cause me to walk in hope. If I keep dealing with you, I'm the accuser of the brother. 
They told Jesus, get us off here and get me on. A couple of them, a couple of them didn't say anything. Save yourself. Save us. No. Obey. Obey. Everybody in here, no matter how, how well you hear or don't hear God, you know what's right and wrong. Amen. And you can compromise. It's right, but 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 you see, I I'm tired. Well, I got resurrection power to heal. See, 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 let me tell you something about being tired, about being sick, about being under all that stuff. All of you all experience that. That's part of life. How much you pray, speak in tongues, all that. You might get, you don't get sick sometimes. You should stay sick. The worst sickness is not in your body, it's in your head. It's the worst sickness. When you sick up here, no, Jesus help you. You take Jesus to reconstruct your mind and your thoughts. We call it crazy, loony, all of that. She's saying it, she's saying it. She's saying it. She's saying it. I hear it. She's saying it. All right. So I want you to allow the crisis in you to arise. The word resurrection on the clothes means to stand up, to come, back, come alive from the dead, to be restored back up. And some of us have been through, uh, we're kind of like war babies. We've been through war. We've been torn and pushed and, and tangled up and all this. And so we need God to heal us. He can't send us nowhere because we're all broken up. Inside. And so the Spirit of God that's in you is challenging you with a thing that cha is challenging you. Whatever is challenging you, God's in behind it. He wants you to step it up and believe in for victory. Let me put it back on you. We're playing tennis. I just hit it back in your court. So the thing that's come against you, make up your mind right now. First of all, there ain't no mountain too high, ain't no valley too low, ain't nothing God cannot do. There is nothing, let me tell you, there's nothing, look at myself, there's nothing God can't do. There's nothing God can't do. And there's nothing God doesn't want to do with you. Tell somebody that. There's nothing God, there's God, doesn't, nothing want God doesn't want to do with you. So let him do it. So let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. In the name of, in the words of Bar. Let him use it. <laughs> let him use it. How are you going to let him use it? How are you going to let him use it? Let him use it. No, let him use it. Father, we thank you for your incredible and remarkable faith that you give us. Lord, we thank you that you let us use and we'll let you use our lives. Whatever that might be. Lord. Yes, Lord. We surrender to that. We're open to that. We thank you for that. Father of this very power, we ask to God that you seal the covenants that we made with you when we signed on to accept you as our Lord and Savior. We cut a covenant. Let there not be a covenant breaker in the house. But revive those of us, Lord, who's got a little shaky with our covenant. Lord, because you paid the price, you're the only possessing. And Father, when we take communion today, let the massive healing break forth. Let great restoration break forth. Let great revelation be released. Let great things begin to happen for the people of God as we release over this community your grace, your favor, your power, your authority, your wisdom, your knowledge. Father, give them things to journal today. Give them revelation and dreams. Give them visions, oh God, when we receive today, Lord. Let things happen supernaturally, Lord. We release it in this house, God. Let them have a takeout package, Lord. Let that resurrection power just be off of them when they leave this house today. It is the same power that raised you, your son from the dead, is raising us up and we thank you right now. Amen. We'll Amen. Praise God. God bless you all. Have a great day.